Welcome back. It is day five, and we have received the package that Wolfgang Ritter sent us. And we also got a call from Professor Hartridge saying that he uh, found some interesting information about that Veve. Apparently it dates back to a slave revolt in Santo Domingo in uh, 1791, so that's quite old. Uh, however, before we deal with with all that stuff, let's read the paper. Times Picayune, dated June 22nd, 1993. Disgusted with the state of the voodoo murder case, Gabriel turns right to his horoscope. The shadow upon you is no longer reversible. Wonderful. Yeah. I wonder how all the other people reading this horoscope feel about that. Um, let's see. Let's take a look at that package. Also, uh, noticing by the date, tomorrow is apparently, uh, the, uh, night of the, uh, of St. John's Eve. So if this cult is going to do anything, I suppose they will do it then. I'm trying to look for the package. Oh, I guess we didn't get the package, we just got the contents. Right. Gunter Ritter's diary is leather bound. Its parchment pages are old and fragile. There was also a letter. The letter is addressed to Gabriel from Wolfgang Ritter. What was this again? The letter is addressed to Heinz Ritter, Gabriel's grandfather. Oh, that's the letter we found before, of course. I'm a bit confused. Let's read the letter from Wolfgang. Wolfgang's letter says... Dear Gabriel, Please read the enclosed journal carefully. It might help you understand your family's special obligations and our current predicament. God be with you, Uncle Wolfgang. All right, let's do as he asked and read the journal. Gabriel reads through the pages Wolfgang marked. He reads of Gunter Ritter's journey to Charleston as witch hunter, hired by the townsmen to solve a series of ritualistic murders. He reads about Gunter's meeting with a beautiful slave woman, Tetolo, and of Gunter's tormenting urges for her. That oh, sounds familiar. He reads of their physical union and passion, and of Gunter's investigations into the murders. The victims were all crew members on a certain slaving expedition to Africa, it seemed. The second to the last entry described Gunter's plan to set a trap for the coven committing the murders. He found the name of one of the surviving members of the crew, a man now living in the West Indies. Gunter has spread a false rumor that the man is returning to Charleston. He himself will impersonate the sailor and allow himself to fall into the hands of the coven. Naturally, Gunter has arranged for able-bodied assistants to follow and attack the coven before they can do him harm. Olsey, son of a bitch, wasn't he? Quiet. Gabriel turns to the final entry of the journal. Um, let's see. Gabriel reads... He oh, bad. Oh. Natural. Olsey, son of a... Yeah. Apparently, um, you can't have the narrator read that, so I will. Dear Father, I offer these final words as apology for the harm done to our sacred office. The woman I wrote off, Tetelo, was the witch I sought. I have committed terrible crimes. I loved this witch, then betrayed her and then used our sacred family power to free her and aid her in destroying this colony. The 
talisman is gone. Tetlo took it. I can but pray for thy forgiveness, for thy swift recovery of the talisman, and that my punishment in hell will be long and bitter. Thy undeserving son, Gunther. Right. So now we know where Gunther went. That's an obscure jo joke. Anyway, um... This business between uh, Gunther and Tesselo reminds me a lot of Gabriel and Malia, and not in a good way. And apparently there's some kind of talisman that um, he lost, was taken by the witch Tetlo. Is that the talisman we've been seeing in our dreams? Wait a second. Speaking of that talisman, I kept saying that we've seen it somewhere before, but... Yes, there it is. That's the talisman we've seen in our dreams, shown up in... Gabriel's father's sketchbook. I'm going to assume that that's the same talisman that once belonged to the Ritter family, but it was apparently lost by Gunther. I wonder if they ever managed to recover it. I doubt it. Um, I want to talk to Grace for a second. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Ooh, we got a whole bunch of new stuff to talk about. And we asked her before to research Feves, and she did um, give us some information in the form of that newspaper clipping, but we never talked to her about them afterwards, so let's try that. Do you know anything about Veve? I told you, I can't help you with that. Apparently not. Um, I thought she did, but I'm... Wrong, it seems. Have you ever heard of Dumbala? Ooh, no. Makes my skin crawl, though. Well, maybe um, Professor Hartridge will know something about that. He seems to be in on all of these different uh, voodoo loa and, sh and stuff. I'm assuming Dumbala is a loa. Ugun Badagri. We've heard that before, haven't we? Does. Ogun Badaikri mean anything to you? No, sorry. Wasn't that the Lord of Destruction that Hartridge mentioned? Or am I confusing things? Do you know anything about Rada drums? Rada drums? No, afraid not. Um. She doesn't know anything about rod drums now, but... Could you do some research for me? Sure. What? We can ask her to research them. After all, if they're being used to send messages, it would be very helpful if we could find out the code they use. Could you research rod drums for me? Rod drums? Sure. I don't think we have any books on that topic in the shop, but I'll contact our suppliers. Assuming any of them will extend you any credit. Tell them it's an emergency. Uh-huh. I can see where a Rada drum book would be incredibly urgent. Anything else? It is incredibly urgent. But I can also understand why our suppliers would not believe that. I can't think that. of anything. Okay. Right, then I think um, it's probably time to pay a visit to Professor Hartridge to see what he found out, and to ask him about uh, Dambala and Ogun Baragri and all that stuff. Nothing we can do about this guy, unfortunately. He's still creeping me out. I'm out of here. Try not to sell out the store while I'm gone. Good luck! So to Tulane University.
Hopefully Hartridge is in his office. Hey, Hartridge, what's the good word? Hartridge? Yeah. Oh god, not again. Um, okay. That's the second murdered person you've been present at. Gabriel, this is not gonna look good. To, uh... And speaking of things that don't look good, yikes. Something about Hartridge's death mask reminds Gabriel of the way Crash checked out. Not a pretty ending. Well, I can really only think of one thing that could cause this. They've been force choked. The Sith are behind this. It's the only logical explanation. Something about. Okay, maybe not. This is bad because we wanted to talk to him about stuff. Well, maybe uh, if we look around a bit, we can find some of his research. Hopefully he left some notes or something about um, the VV. Dr. Hartridge's desk. On the desk is a sheet of paper with some scribble notes. It looks recent. Jackpot, I suppose. These notes look interesting. Of course, we are not going to call the police or anything. We're just going to have to assume that Gabriel does that off-screen uh, for Crash as well. Um, let's see those notes. I guess that's it. The Agri tribe, People's Republic of Benin. Okay, Dambala, the snake. No, that's the symbol that you use to scare the Baro. Ogum Badagri. Circle with... Uh, what was it? Ring within a ring? Looks like a cross eye to me. But these are parts of the VV. And again... Circle within a circle, or ring within a ring... Is something we saw before... In the sketchbook. And could these snakes that uh, our father was so fond of have anything to do with Dumballa? I'm going to guess that they do. I kind of feel sorry about dragging Hartridge into this thing now. He did not deserve to die. I mean, Crash kind of brought it on to himself, I suppose. But Hartridge is only involved in this whole thing because we asked him to. Also, it's kind of inconvenient that he died because now we can't ask him about Dambala and Ogun Badagri. Who else would know about something like that? Well, we'll have to think about that in the next video.